Hi there. Welcome to another Board Gems video. Board Gems is a video series that I do one video a week in which I cover an older game. It's usually not like crazy old, like 40, 50 years old, more like 10, 15, 20 years old. Games that are kind of in, from often from the early days of the hobby. Not always, but they're usually games at any rate that are in the past in the hobby. People don't talk about anymore. There's so much cult of the new, right? People are always talking about the new stuff. And I am here to remind people that the older games are still good and we should probably still be playing them. And the game that I'm going to feature this week is definitely an older gem. Uh, this is Linny Eins. Call it Linny Eins, please. Please don't call it Linny One. That's German and English and it just, just bugs me. It just grinds my gears. So you can call it Lineage, or if you want to, you can call it uh, Streetcar, which was the English name as published by Mayfair. Lineage is for two to five players, officially. Um, not recommended with two. This is ages 10 and up, which usually means like kind of a next step game, uh, which is not necessarily like a super, super light family game, but one that has a little bit more to it. This is kind of borderline. Uh, Eight-year-olds could definitely play it. It's a tiny bit thinky, and the people who, the players who plan ahead will do better in the game. Um, so I think older players will have a bit more of an appreciation for it than the younger players. And the box says uh, 45 to 60 minutes to play. It's designed by Stefan Dora, who is a, a very famous old school designer, uh, which brings a lot of nostalgia probably to old time hobbies to hear that name, and is published by Gold Sieber. Now that's a company that I don't think they're they're not really around anymore. I think they merged with another company and so they're not really present. But they used to be a, a big deal in the hobby. They used to have make a ton of these games in this kind of format. This is a pretty big box. And um and Gold Seaver is another name that if you mention it to some hobbyists who've been in the hobby for a long time, they might get this glossy-eyed, kind of nostalgic look. Ah, Gold Sieber, right? Games. They made Lineaites, of course. They made Mississippi Queen, for which they won the Spiel des Jahres. Um, Leuvenherz, Entdecker, Big City, just uh, Africa, Doge, which I have, but it's missing pieces, so I have yet to play it. But they have a lot of great games in their series, and a lot of bad ones. Now, this one was recommended by the Spiel des Jahres jury, in 1995. And of course, that year is the year that Catan won. A year in which Catan won, there might be some really good games also in that year that maybe would have had a chance to win the Spiel des Jahres if they had just come out a different year. But they came out the year of Catan, and so they're kind of forgotten about. Um, another one that came out that year and was recommended by the jury, but is not forgotten about, is Medici which is still a fantastic game today. I love it. It uh, was one of the first games that Mayfair imported. Mayfair Games, an American company, they were one of the first companies, if not the first, to import games from Germany into North America. And initially, they imported a bunch of German editions, and they opened them up, put in an English rule book, um, put a little English sheet on the back of the box, and sealed it back up for sale. And that's what this is. That's what this one is. I still have the, the English uh, printout from the back of the box. Um, and then later on, Mayfair produced their own version, which they call Streetcar. Uh, Look-wise, Streetcar does not look anywhere near as good as this one, in my opinion. Uh, I think Lineaites is beautiful in its own way. It's a track-building game, and as you'll see in the How to Play part, the tracks kind of loop around and they go all over, and it's really just it's chaotic... But there's beauty in the chaos, seeing how the, the crazy tracks all develop and, of course, trying to figure out how to get your trolley, which is secret, to go to the particular stops that you need to go, which are also secret. Uh, it's a really nice classic family game. I'm going to show you how it plays first, and then I'll talk about why it's a board gem. To set up the game, place the board on the table between the players and put all these uh, stop signs, these little H signs, I think it's H for halt, so it's the stop sign in German, and just put those to the side along with the trolleys 
There's six different trolleys, but they won't come into play until the end of the game. And the die, which is numbered one to four with two hulls, two H's. So just put those to the side for now. Some of the tiles are dark colored and have the gold zebra ball on them. These are the starting tiles. And you're going to give each player five starting tiles, three straights, and two curves. And any that are left over um, are not gonna be used. So I've set it up for a four player game. You'll see there's tiles here and here and, and there. The rest of the tiles, now I got it in a bag. The drawstring bag doesn't come with it, but you can see these uh, are a little bit lighter than the starting tiles. And so if you don't have a drawstring bag, just stack them up uh, in, within reach of all players. And you'll see there's, there's the typical straights and curves, but there's also more complicated ones. There are six of these line tiles, numbered one to six. Each one corresponds with a pair of terminals on opposite sides of the board. So for example, you can see line five is, matches these two terminals here. You're gonna shuffle these up and you're going to give each player one face down. Of course, you can look at your own and see which line you are. Depending on the number of players, you're going to get one of these two piles. You're going to use this pile, which shows three letters per row in a two or three player game. In a four player game, you're going to use the one that just has two letters. These represent buildings on the board. You'll see there's letters ranging from A to, I think M is the, the biggest. So there's a dozen or so buildings. And you're going to mix these up and give each player one. Again, face down. So other players can't see what they are. But of course, you can look at your own. So this shows what you have to do during the game. The goal of the game is to connect up your two terminals with a continuous line of trolley track while passing by the two stops that are listed for your line. So in the case of line five, it shows D and G. So you find D and G on the board. Here's D and here's G. So your goal is to create a line of train tracks connecting these two terminals and the path passes by D and G. Each of these buildings will have a stop next to it. The first track that's placed next to it will get a stop sign. And your route, if you have to stop at that building, your route has to go through that track that has the stop sign. So you might end up with a very convoluted route because of course all players are adding tiles to the same board and you're going to have a, a tracks going in all sorts of different directions. But the goal of the game is to create an, as efficient a route as possible because once you've finished your route, you will declare the start of your next turn that you can start your trolley run. And you would get your trolley, you'd reveal your line number and your stops, and you'll trace with your finger the route you intend to take. Then you'll be moving your every turn, instead of adding tracks, you'll be moving your trolley, rolling the die and moving the trolley, the corresponding number of spaces. And the first player to complete their trolley run wins the game. Now, for the main part of the game, you're going to be adding tracks. And play is clockwise. On your turn, you're going to be play two tracks to the board. Each player has a hand of five, which is face up, visible to all players. You're going to play two, and then you're going to refill your hand to five again. You can place tracks anywhere on the board on an empty space, but there are some restrictions. Basically, you can't create dead ends. This is not a dead end because you could still add tiles to either side in order to extend the route. But you can't create dead ends, so you can't have a route that goes to the edge of the board, unless it's, of course, through a terminal. You can have a route that goes into a building or into the side of a tile where there's no track coming from that side. But otherwise, you can place anywhere on the board. The first track that's placed next to a building, like so, will get a stop sign which you place, as you place it on the building, kind of facing with the stop part, the H facing toward the track, just like so. 
So any player who has D as part of their required run has to have their track go through this line. Even if later on there is a more track doing something like this, doesn't matter. A trolley going through this way will not have stopped at D. The trolley has to go through this line because that's where the stop sign is. Instead of placing a tile down, you can also upgrade a tile. I'll show you some tiles that you can use to upgrade. So here we go, things like this. The general rule is that you always have to maintain existing connections. So if a track looks something like this, and you're hoping to use this track as well for your route, but you want it to go this way, you can upgrade. If you have this tile, you could upgrade this tile with this one, because you can see it maintains the same connection, but it adds a new one. So you can do that. And this tile goes into your hand. If that was your first tile play, you could actually play this as your second tile. But otherwise, anyway, it'll go into your hand. At the end of the game, you refill your hand to five. So if you replace tiles on your turn, you won't have to draw two. You'll be drawing fewer because you'll have some in here. And then later on, you can upgrade, players can upgrade again. So for example, this tile can be upgraded with this tile here because again, it maintains the same connections. Whereas here, the trolleys can only go this way or this way. Now trolleys can go this way or this way or this way. But the tiles that have trees cannot be upgraded further. There are no tiles in the supply that are more involved or more complicated versions of this one. There's no tracks you can add to this one anymore. And the trees kind of remind you of that. That's a final tile. You, you can place two tracks on your turn. The first one can be illegal as long as the second one fixes it. And I'll show you an example. Placing this would be illegal because it's leading into a dead end. But if that's your first tile play, you can upgrade this track with this one. You'll see it maintains the existing track. And if that's your second play, now you check, is it legal? Yes. All the tracks are connected. There is no uh, dead ends created. So that was a legal play. So you're gonna play like that. Players gonna play like that until one player has finished their route. Now I'm going to play the game a little bit just by myself, a little four-handed game here and get some tracks on the board. Okay, we're nearing the end of a four player game and the game end is triggered because this player to my left has completed their route. So they would reveal their line and their stops. So their line three, which are these two terminals and they have to connect H and K. So they'll trace the route. So it doesn't matter the order so they can go K to here, and then to H here, then they'll have to loop around down here because they can't go straight through there. Trolleys can never reverse, and they can't make 90 degree turns. So a trolley could not turn here, for example. They always have to follow a smooth curve. So the trolley coming this way would have to come down here, but then they could come up here and then from there go straight into the terminal. So they can start, they grab their trolley matching their line and they start on either terminal that they want. A terminal counts as one space so they just put it on the terminal there and they roll the die and they move forward that many spaces. One space being one tile or again the terminal counts as one space. One, two, three. If they rolled an H they could move as far as the next stop. So if they started here and they rolled an H, they would come all the way to here. Now note actually that B is not part of their route, but when they roll an H, they have to move to the next stop, even if it's not their own. Then we'll go to the next player who, well, I already have this face up because I'm Pretending it's you, it's your play, your, your line five. So you would also announce that you've completed your route. 
line five stops DG. Well, here are the two terminals. And where is D? Here. And G is here. So for example, you wouldn't be able to go straight through there. So you'd have to come around like this and then pass G here and then come back up. And then down here and then over to the D and then to there. And so this player would also start. And you can start at either terminal you can choose. This player is not quite done, so they're actually going to keep adding tiles. So for example, they may do something like this. Again, they're upgrading the tile, and they get that back. So they're not quite done. You can see where they're trying to go now, but they're in, they're in quite a rush, so. And now this player has also completed their route. They are line six, CE. So here's the six terminal, and where's C and E? Right here. So for example, one route would go like this, past the E, past the C, and then to here. So again, this player is ready to go. Now it's back to this player, and they're gonna roll the die again. Only one, you see, it ranges from one to four, so it's a pretty big difference. Now, had they rolled, in this case, for example, a four, they would have to stop at this stop anyway because it's part of their route. You'll see they have to stop at K. So even though they rolled a bigger number, they have to stop at this stop. Now, do you have to stop at locations that are not part of your route? So if green rolled a four here, this is I, it's not part of his route, can he go past that route, past that stop? Um, it's actually ambiguous. Um, it's not really clear from the rules, but the general consensus in the hobby is yes. Um, so that would they would have to stop, even though it's not their own stop. And so all players are going to continue. So it's now uh, Pink's turn, this one here, five. So they're gonna go here like so. Two, does that, and they finished but they can't start until their next turn. Um, they could, if they wanted to, continue building tracks to try to make their route more efficient. You can see what they have here, 2BM. So here's the M and here's the B. So they're gonna have to go this way to the B and then around here. So it doesn't look like maybe they could try to make this part a little bit more efficient if they wanted to, but they don't really have the tiles for it. So we'll see what they get, I suppose. Even if you could technically finish your route, you can choose to keep laying track in the attempt to make your route more efficient. That's up to you. This player did not get the tiles they wanted to make this a little more efficient, so instead they decided to just give up. Not really give up, but to, to start their route even though they know they're behind. So let's trace the route 2BM. So 2 to M to B, and then in here. And two is ready to go. It's important to note that trolleys can pass each other. There's no blocking in that sense. So line five could actually go through the six trolley here to this location. But actually they can, now keep in mind that whatever route they traced, they have to do that route, they can't change their mind. I don't actually don't remember what I traced, but with this roll, it would actually be advantageous for me to, to go around this way to there. <laughs> but I don't remember which way I traced. So the other players have to kind of watch and see. It's like, oh no, you said you'd go the other way. And that's it. This player, line three, traveled from their terminal all the way to their terminal after passing the, the required number of stops. That's it. You're ready to play Lineaints. So Lineaints falls into a category of games that is not really popular anymore. and But it's a recurring theme of board gems. They're games that are thinky, but have a really strong random element. In Lineaintz's example, the general board play is somewhat strategic. 
and it's definitely thinky. You have your route that you're trying to plan out and you're trying to make sure everything connects, but if you're trying to work around other players and it's every turn's a little bit of a puzzle, how best to arrange my route. Um, but at the end, it's a dice roll off, right? And that can rub some gamers the wrong way. Now that roll off at the end is fun and it can make for an exciting finish, right? If two people uh, have both finished their roots around the same time, or even if one player is a little bit later, um, but if they made a more efficient route, then the roll-off kind of helps offset that a little bit. The person who finished their route first might not have the most efficient route. And even if they start and they keep rolling the die, and the other player, they come in a little bit later, they finish their route later, but they have a, a better route, a more efficient route, one with fewer stops. And... If that's the case, then the roll-off at the end can be really exciting. Can player one get to the end before player two catches up? Uh, so that's really exciting. It can, however, telegraph the end a little bit, especially if you're playing with a lot of players, four or five players. If one person gets a big lead, so they finish their route first before the other players have a chance to, and their first couple of rolls are four or H, which is move to the next stop, uh, you know, you might as well pack it in, right? Um, so in this game, be prepared that, you know, the, the main part of the gameplay is done, and then when you get to the roll-off, maybe you don't even have to bother with the roll-off. Maybe at that point, you kind of see who wins. But if it looks like it's going to be close, the roll-off definitely makes for an exciting finish. So I actually happen to like that. In newer versions, they kind of changed them. And the one that Mayfair did when they made their own version, Streetcar, they instead had a variant which had no luck. Just the first player who started could only move one space, then the next player would move two spaces, and the next player after that would move three spaces. So it caused a little bit of a disadvantage for the player who finishes early. On the one hand, it's less exciting. And it can also, even though it's luck-free, it kind of feels unfair. So I'm not sure I could recommend that. Um, they did reprint this game in Germany in 2010, and they did change uh, the die roll at the end to be kind of a push your luck game. So instead of one die, it's three dice. On your turn, when you move your, your, uh, your piece, you roll all three dice, and some of them are like move one or two spaces, but some of them are like start go back to start <laughs> or go back to the last terminal because your route can go through terminals other terminals to get to your terminal and then you pick one result after you roll and then you can choose stay uh, keep that result or roll and add a second die but you always have to set aside a die every time you roll um and if if you can even roll that third and final die um but it's really risky because you might have to start all the way back uh, at the last terminal but it, I do like that. I haven't tried it myself, but I like the sound of it because what that kind of means is that uh, the player who is already in the lead, who's already had their trolley moving forward, it's in their best interest because they're already a little bit far ahead to be cautious, right? To not push their luck um, because they don't want to start all the way back at the beginning. Whereas players who finish later, they, they're they far behind, so they also don't have as much to lose if they mess up or if they roll that uh, that symbol. Um, so it encourages them to push their luck and try to catch up. So I haven't tried it, but based on the description, I'd be really curious to. I think that might be the way to go in this game. The game, I'm telling you, the game can be played really brutal, okay? Because you can play basically anywhere. Near the end of the game, especially with few players, you can kind of get a sense of where people are trying to go and where the terminals, like which terminals players have, there's nothing to stop a player from just putting the wrong tile in front of another player's terminal just to mess them up so they have a really hard time getting in there. So it's best if all the players are kind of on the same level or have the same approach to games. So you can play this in kind of a family-friendly way where you just focus on your own game and don't really try to interfere too much with other players, just trying to get your route done. But you can also play as a gamer in a more sharky way, placing tiles with a direct purpose of messing up another player's route. 
Um, and that's alleviated by the fact that, of course, that route is secret, even their start and end point are secret. So you don't see a lot of that until near the end of the game. So there's also even a little bit of a slight deduction element, although it's usually pretty clear by the end of the game, especially if you're playing with few players, because there's just not a lot of track on the board, and it's just very obvious where people are going. There's fewer players to keep track of. Um, so it's, just, it's best if all players are kind of on the same level, or they have the same approach to games. Are we going to play the Sharky? Great. Are we going to play this kind of a more family-friendly, just a friendly style of play? Great. It, it can support either. I would generally probably say, I checked BGG, and generally people believe that it is good with three, four, or five players, um, but it's best with four. I agree with the best with four, but I would probably avoid playing this with three. Now, I really like the game, so I would personally play it with three, but for most people, I wouldn't recommend it for the reasons I mentioned. And I'm going to mention my last play of it, which was a three-player game. So we all had three, we all had our, our uh, terminal cards, our secret terminals, our secret lines, they call them, and our three stops that we had to make. When we revealed them at the end of the game, what we noticed was two of the three players shared two of the same three stops. And those two stops were on basically opposite sides of the board. So you had two players who were both working to make this really long east-west connection. There's no north in the game, but you know what I mean. This long cross-the-board connection, they were both working toward that. And those two players finished pretty far ahead of the third player who had uh, just you know three completely different stops that other players didn't share. So I want to add that caveat. I personally would not recommend the game with three. If you're going to play it once, play it with four. Five is pretty in your face, and I have heard some people play it with six. I wouldn't recommend that. Um, in fact, this version doesn't technically support it because the uh, starting tiles the players play with are actually um, a diff have a different back than the other tiles. And so there's only enough starting tiles for five players. You could technically fish out the same tiles in the general supply and use that for a sixth player. And the game supports it, but it would be, it would be pretty crazy. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'd, lo I'd love to try it once. Maybe it'll be just, I don't think it would be like a good strategic experience, but it could just be crazy and maybe in a good way. I don't know. I wouldn't call it a take that game, but you can definitely punish other players. Um, assuming, assuming that you know where they have to go. If you can kind of deduce that, figure that out, then you can really make life miserable for them. Um, but in that sense, it's, it's interactive, right? It's an interactive game. You're, you're working in a shared space that is constantly changing based on all the player actions, and you're trying to figure out how do you make your route work um, among this chaos on the board. Uh, so I really like it. And this edition I find is quite beautiful. I've seen pictures of Streetcar. Not good. I don't think I don't think it looks good personally. But I love the look of this one. And the fact that it, you never create dead ends. And it, it, it just makes for a really pleasing visual um, on the board. When you see all these loop-de-loops and uh, of the tracks. It's a it's a really pleasant, pleasant game. A pleasant game that can be played in a non-pleasant way if your game group is that type. But like I said, for four players for sure, and probably five, I've played it once with five players, but it was a long time ago. I don't remember the experience. Keep in mind, I mean, I had fun, but keep in mind that in a five player game, you are gonna have some players near the end who don't stand a chance, right? It, um, it's not forgiving that way. You might have one player who just takes off and runs away with the game, and you may have one player who's so far back they have no chance of catching up. Probably it's best if your game group knows that going in, and so they don't get too frustrated. But I think it's a really beautiful game. It is a classic game. It's, it's a name that comes up um, a lot, I would say, when talking about kind of those old classic games that, that just aren't talked about much anymore, which is exactly in my wheelhouse. So that's why I'm featuring it as this week's board gem. 
Thanks for watching. Remember, older games like Lineites don't stop being good just because new games come out. Take care.